One of the things that can be difficult for mediums is tapping into a vibration of love when we don't really know what love is. And that probably sounds a little ridiculous, but hear me out. If you grew up in an environment where you had very toxic parents, you may have a distorted view of love. If you've ever been in a relationship with someone who was supposed to love you and yet he or she abused you, you may have a distortion of love. And when we focus on mediumship, when we raise our vibration, we are taught, we are often told to tune into the vibration of love. And this can be difficult if we don't really know what love is. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips that will help you to retrain your brain, to raise your vibration, and to correct your brain's interpretation of love. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nicole Guillaume. I'm a psychic medium and here on this channel, I love to talk about very spiritual things. <laughs> we talk about psychic development, mediumship development, the afterlife, connecting with guys and angels and so much more. And see, it's my passion to help people to embrace and accept and enhance their own psychic and intuitive abilities because I believe when we're able to accept that part of ourselves, we can live truly authentic lives and be true to ourselves because when we're true to ourselves, that's when true magic happens. That's when we can live and lead whole and fulfilling lives. So that is my hope for you. So my dear precious friends, for those of you who know what I'm referring to when I talk about growing up with toxic, toxic parents or being in loveless abusive relationships, please know that I'm not saying this with any form of judgment. I am actually coming from a place of familiarity because if you've watched any of my previous videos in which I talk about my upbringing, you know that I was raised by toxic, unloving parents, and that I was also in an abusive relationship for seven years. And I didn't recognize it for a long time, but I did have a distorted view of love. And it's really hard to contemplate or to even know what love is when a majority of the people in your life who are supposed to love you treated you with contempt or played mind games with you or wanted to control you or, or toxic or abusive in some way. And so when this happens, we as mediums may accidentally tune into more darker energies or we might become afraid of our gifts. Or like I said earlier, when people talk about tuning into the vibration of love, that's difficult for us to maintain because we've never been in an energy of love because most of what we've been around was highly toxic. So it's by contrast that we learn what love is. We grew up in environments or we were in a relationship or in some type of environment in which we were treated poorly. And so we know that if we are treated poorly that being treated correctly is going to be the contrast of being treated poorly, right? So if someone was always yelling at us and was always critical of us and told us we were fat, we were ugly, we were stupid, or whatever verbal assault they threw our way, we know that the contrast of that, we know the opposition and therefore the loving comments of that would be, you're so smart, you're so intelligent, you're beautiful, you are the perfect weight, you have a beautiful body. We know that those are the compliments and the statements that actually reflect love. And so what I would encourage you to do is to start speaking to yourself in that way. I want you to really think about the things you were told by your toxic parents or by your toxic lover or spouse. Think about the horrible things that they said and, and don't think about it to ruminate on it, to ruminate on it. Think about it so that you can figure out the contrast and start saying those good things to yourself because our mind loves praise, but our mind also holds on to criticism. 
our mind, our ego, call it what you will, is easily injured. And I want you to know that's actually okay. <laughs> you know, I know there's a lot of people who will say that if you get angry or if you have a negative emotional response to something, that's the ego. Well, here's the thing. I don't want you to worry about the ego. I believe that the intelligent forces that be created us with an ego for a purpose. So I don't believe the ego is bad. I think the ego is misunderstood. I think that the ego can heal in many different ways if we douse it with love, with real love. And one of the ways we can do that is by offering different compliments and praise to ourselves, to that part of us that's been injured that we don't know how to heal. So you can look in the mirror, you can do mirror work and say, well, there you are, sexy. You looking good today. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Hey, gorgeous. Hey, how you doing? Flirt with yourself. No one's gonna see it. No one's gonna know what you're doing. And these things feel silly and they feel good. And they might even feel uncomfortable because you're not used to hearing that from someone. And so it's really important to your self-esteem and to your confidence and really to your sense of being that you know that you're worthy of praise, that you know you're deserving of hearing good things. And once you start to scrub your brain of all the negative uh, messages it's been told because you were brainwashed in a bad way. We want to give our brain a good cleansing in a good way. So this is purposeful brainwashing, which is healthy, right? No, that's not a popular thing to say, but it's true. We're scrubbing out the negativity and we are going to take out those negative messages and we're going to place good messages in. So why is this important? Why, what does this have anything to do with mediumship? I believe that those of us who grew up in toxic environments, naturally lean towards the more negative energies and the darker vibrations. And the reason I say that isn't to scare you. It's because this is what I've uncovered talking to so many of my clients and talking to so many of my students. People who grew up in abusive households have a natural knack of tuning into that energy and leaning into it, even if it's uncomfortable. What's really frustrating is that these sort of personality types we grow up with become very familiar to us and we accidentally play those out in our adult relationships too. And so if we meet someone as an adult who seems really nice and fun, but we feel familiar with them, but we feel uncomfortable with them, we may tell ourselves that we're being too hard on ourselves. We may tell ourselves we're being judgmental towards this person, but really what's happening is our intuition and our subconscious mind is saying, hold up there, hold up. We grew up with this. Do we really want to repeat that cycle? And if this adult, this person, this new friend, or possibly this person you're dating is familiar and fun, but shooting up red flags, that we can't really see yet, but we're feeling them, then our intuition is asking us not to put us through that hell and that torment again. And unfortunately, we don't usually listen to that because again, we don't wanna be judgmental. And if we grew up in an environment where we were heavily controlled and we were constantly beaten down to size either physically or through our words then we have this innate need to please other people and to find acceptance in the sort of personality type that we felt rejected by and betrayed during those critical moments of our life when we were growing up and so that's why we repeat that cycle and in mediumship we might find that when we tune in to spirits on the other side that we're able to make a communication, right? We're able to make a connection, but maybe we're not able to hold it for very long, or maybe we notice that the neutral or lower vibrating spirits we connect with are, are easier to connect with, but also draining on our energy than those that vibrate higher. And so that's something that we want to keep in mind, right? And as you continue to work with your spirit guides and your angels, 
your vibration will start to lift to their level because your guides and your angels are fantastic at coming to your rescue. They, they can reach down to you and help pull you up, but you have to do your part too. They're not gonna do all of it. They like us to learn, right? They're big on that. Have you noticed that? Guides and angels, as much as they are wonderful and compassionate, kind and loving, and I completely love them and I'm thankful for their presence in my life, they like to put us through different lessons. They, they are our teachers on a lot of different levels. And so they'll help us to a point, but then we it's up to us to figure out the rest for ourselves or it's up to us to put their advice and guidance into use. And that looks like a lot of times saying no to others and saying yes to ourselves, right? Or it could even look like saying yes to a opportunity that we're afraid of <laughs> or an experience we're unsure of and saying no to something that's familiar to us but not good for us, right? So it's one of the ways that can look. But mediumship is also about taking responsibility for ourselves. And so we have to take responsibility for our own energy and our vibration. And if we are having a hard time connecting to spirits on the other side, if we make the connection, but we can't maintain it for a long time and that's consistent, we have to stop and ask ourselves why that is, right? And usually it does have something to do with us. And that's not because something's wrong with us and it's not because we're bad people and it's not because you're undeserving of being a medium. It's probably because there's something else going on, right? you might not be taking the best care of yourself. Maybe you're not getting enough sleep. Maybe you have some health issues you're ignoring. There's a lot of different reasons as to why you may not be able to maintain that connection. Not taking proper, your, proper care of yourself can be a residual of abuse because while you were growing up or while you were in a toxic situation, you were taught that you don't matter. Through the words and actions of someone else, you were taught that you don't matter. So it's really important that you start to change that programming because here's what I need you to know. You matter more than you think you do. You do. You matter more than you think you do. And it's not just me who needs you to know that. It's your guides and your angels who need you to know that too. It's the people that you haven't helped yet. It's the precious souls on the other side that you're going to communicate with sometime at some point in your life. It's the spirits you're going to help. It's the souls here that you're going to help. They need you to be better to yourself. They need you to practice self-love. So don't think that self-love and self-care is selfish. It's not. I know it seems an exaggeration to say that all of humanity is counting on you, but my friend, humanity's counting on you. <laughs> it's counting on all of us who are trying our best to bring awareness and light to this world. And so please know that you are worth saving and please know that you're worth all the praise that you can muster up for yourself. So I want you at some point today to take a pen and a paper and write out so many compliments to yourself, write out pages and pages of praise, talk about the things that you excel at, talk about the challenges that you've overcome and praise yourself for all of them because you are amazing. You've done incredible things in your life and you're going to continue to do incredible things in your life and you're going to continue to get through all of these crazy challenges that come your way. And I mean, come on, some of these challenges are just nuts, right? Like you look at your life and you're like, why me? <laughs> like, what? why is this happening? And anyone else who would have gone through this would probably I go crazy and yet here I am still going through the motions and still kicking like what is going on? I know you've had those moments. I know you have. And so my friend, one of the things that's important for your mediumship development is to figure out what love is to you. And again, you do that by contrast of the way you've been treated. But there's another thing I want you to try too. 
when you're listening to different guided meditations and when you're reading different books on mediumship, love always comes up, right? Love is a universal idea um, and a universal vibration that I guess it's taken for granted that we're all in tuned with. We all have access to it, but we're not all in tuned to it. And, and that's not, it's not our fault. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about what love means to you. Not necessarily romantic love, but that agape love, right? The, the love that you have for your friends or when you love an experience, what does that feel like? So if love <laughs> is something that you're starting to recognize you have a distorted view on because you think of love as being both painful and necessary, or when you think about entering another relationship, if you're single and you're like, I don't know if I want to do that because I don't want to get hurt again. That means that you associate love with pain. That's what that means. So we need to fix that, right? So instead of using the word love, think about another high vibing word. What's another high vibing word that you have a good grasp on? Joy. What about joy? You know what joy feels like? How about happiness? What about when you are in that energy of, you know, when you're laughing and you can't stop like those fits of laughter, that's a good energy, right? Someone tells you a joke and it's funny, but then you just keep laughing as if it's funnier than it actually is. Or you're watching something comical on TV and you just can't help but to blah, full belly laugh. That seems pretty high vibing to me, right? What about compassion? a little bit on the lower level we would probably think because it's so mellow we think of love sometimes as having butterflies in our stomach or whatever else but compassion is a form of love right that is a love language compassion not like the five love languages i'm not talking about that i'm talking about attributes of love compassion is one of them how does it feel to be compassionate towards someone how does it feel when someone is compassionate towards you well kindness what does the energy of kindness feel like? What does the energy of hope feel like? Or a dream that's realized? You know, when you have a dream or a goal and you're going after it and you make it so clear in your head and you're proud of yourself for every step you take towards that goal, even on those days when you don't feel like working towards it, but you go towards it anyway, you know that energy I'm talking about? Guess what? That's a form of love, that is strength in motion and that is a form of love too so try that try that for the next few days and see if that changes your ability to connect with the other side because i think it will i'm pretty sure it will and if you are one of those um mediums who naturally leans in towards the more neutral or lower vibing spirits and by lower vibing i just mean earthbounds and that sort of thing. It doesn't mean that it's anything scary, although for some of you it might be. But you'll find that if you start changing the word love to something else and focusing on happiness, on joy, on hope, on something like that, something that you're really familiar with, a word that you have a strong emotional association with, you use that in your meditations instead. You tune into that before you do your mediumship sessions. And guess what? Your mediumship's going to change for the better. Try it out give it a few days come back to this video and tell me how this works for you now if you would like to work with me one-on-one -on -one, because you are psychic or intuitive and you have other things happening in your life i do offer spiritual mentoring sessions so if you'd like to set that up with me please feel free to visit my website at guidingechoes.com so we can get that set up and if you are new to my channel, welcome. I would like to invite you to subscribe to this channel and also check out the videos to the side. Um, there's gonna be, I offer so many different videos on psychic development, the afterlife and things like that. And if you're interested in that, again, check out these videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.